TV to the space station. We found a very long chamber, 300 meters long, which is the, the length and distance that we actually perform this uh, docking process. And at one end, you here you can see, uh, we've actually simulated uh, the back end of the space station of the, of the Russian segment. And here we've got some uh, laser reflectors. That's exactly the same uh, docking port as is on the space station at the moment. And at the other end, the fixed part, you can see simulation of all the uh, sensors of the Jules Verne, and, and we actually can simulate uh, uh, the docking itself. Now, th this is a completely unique facility. We actually use a boat testing yard uh, in France, which is an interesting uh, use of this, purely because this was the uh, uh, longest uh, uh, room that we could find. We, ha we needed somewhere with 300 meters, and we needed a robot uh, coming towards the spacecraft. And we, in between the two, we completely put the complete control loop. So. ATV mates with the uh, ISS, and the last 300 meters, it is actually guided in using lasers which are reflected off targets, and we completely simulated this during that testing. So, we spent two years uh, in our facilities in STEC doing, apart from this, a lot of other tests, but here we were doing the main functional tests. We'd shown that we could survive the launch environment. Uh, we showed we could survive the EMC environment. We gave it the thermal vacuum so that, uh, again, that it could take everything, the vacuum and the various temperatures in space. And then finally, we did this really very interesting and unique test of actually doing a real docking on the ground from 300 meters of the back end of the service module and the, the spacecraft. So that was the test campaign. Let me just show you a few things of really what, what Jules Verne looks like. Uh, perhaps we can have a, have a look at uh, a vehicle. Now this is an interesting vehicle cause it, uh, picture because it compares the size of ATV versus uh, three, two other well-known vehicles, the Apollo and the Progress. Uh, we're about 11 meters tall, uh, four and a half meters in diameter. And uh, when we launch, we weigh 19 and a half tons. We can actually go up to 20 and a half tons once we uh, uh, see exactly what the capability of our launch vehicle into this orbit is. So we take about seven and a half tons maximum payload into space, which is about three times the capability of progress. So we're going to be the, the largest uh, carrier of cargo to the, to the uh, International Space Station. So what, what, what's inside the uh, uh, the Jules Verne itself. Here in the front end you can see uh, the docking mechanism. Uh, this is exactly the same docking mechanism the Russians use because we're going into the, the docking port in the service module uh, the, on the far right hand side. Just behind that you can see the integrated cargo carrier. This is where this is a, a pressurized module where we put uh, eight racks of dry cargo. Uh, behind that, we have uh, the spacecraft. Now, our spacecraft, because we're going to uh, the space station, which is uh, manned by astronauts and cosmonauts, we have to have this very safe. So, in fact, we have two spacecraft. We have the primary spacecraft, uh, which takes us in with our nominal sensors into the into docking with the uh, ISS. And we have a backup spacecraft, completely independent for safety reasons. If this finds that something is slightly going wrong, we're outside our approach corridor, it can send us away completely independent. So we really have two spacecrafts in the, in the middle of this uh, enormous great bird. And then right at the back of that, behind the solar arrays, you can see the propulsion module. Uh, and this is the propulsion module which we're going to use not only to get uh, the spacecraft from the orbit where we're left, uh, about 230 kilometers circular orbit above the Earth by the Ariane, it takes us up to the ISS uh, orbit, and then this fuel can then be used to reboost the space station to, to help it stop degrading in its orbit. Again, just, just to get a, a feeling of what, what size it, this big bird is, we have a nice uh, picture here, and being a good Englishman, I, we've compared it to a London bus. So you can see it's actually the same size as a London bus, which gives you some idea uh, of how big it is. Uh, when we look at it also inside uh, Ariane, uh, the next picture shows uh, us neatly on top of, of the Ariane 5. 
this is Europe's workhorse uh, launcher, mostly used for uh, boosting telecommunication satellite. So boosting a large uh, mass like this into low Earth orbit is something new for it. Uh, you can see we're inside the large fairing. We take up most of the space inside of it. Uh, we. Because we're about twice or three times the weight of the standard communication satellite, uh, the whole of the upper part of the Ariane has had to be strengthened up so that it, it's a bit stronger. But uh, you can see, you can get some feeling of, of the size of ATV here uh, on the launch vehicle. So what, what, what are we actually going to take to the space station? Uh, we, we have uh, a lot of... Uh, different items. We have, as you could see inside the cargo carrier, uh, we have areas to take uh, a lot of dry cargo, so several tons worth of dry cargo, uh, typically food, uh, clothes for the astronauts, uh, the CDs, etc. Uh, and inside here you can see uh, the inside of the um, cargo carrier and the place where the racks are, they're empty at the moment uh, to take the cargo. Uh, we also take uh, water to the space station uh, on Jules Verne. We're going to have almost 300 kilograms of water. We can take various gases to the space station. Uh, we're only having uh, on Jules Verne about 20 kilograms of oxygen, in fact. Uh, we're taking special fuel for the service module, which we're going to transfer into the Russian service module. So it's actually Russian fuel. Uh, we're taking about 860 kilograms on Jules Verne for that. And also, uh, we take a reboost uh, capability, as I said, so that we can use our own fuel to reboost the space station. And we're taking about two and a half tons of reboost fuel, which we'll use when needed during the six-month mission while we're attached to uh, uh, the space station. So, where are, where are we today? After the testing you saw, uh, which we did in um, uh, the test facilities in Europe, uh, we transferred uh, the spacecraft uh, to our launch site in French Guiana. Uh, this is uh, a South American uh, department of France. Uh, and we've, since we did this last summer in August, uh, and since then we've been doing the final checkout of the spacecraft, making sure that it's ready to launch. Here we'll be able to see some of the activities uh, which we actually have performed in, at the end of last year. So here we are in the last integration uh, hall in uh, French Guiana. Uh, you can see this is the Russian docking mechanism. It's partly extended now. In fact, it's being extended, as you can see. Uh, we obviously did all the last tests of all the subsystems. He here is it extended, making sure that it works perfectly, uh, properly before we uh, ship it to the, up to the space station. Here again, this is this enormous, great, uh, what I call the two spacecraft, the final checkout of this electronics bay, where we have all the electronics to actually control the final rendezvous uh, with the space station. And finally, uh, we're looking at some areas here where this is the back end of the uh, integrated cargo carrier. Here you can see the tanks uh, which, which take up uh, the Russian fuel. And of course, finally, we had to load the dry cargo. Uh, now, this is uh, uh, for Jules Verne. We're taking about uh, 1,300 kilograms of this dry cargo. It has to be very clean because we mustn't take any germs up there. So it was very uh, well cleaned. Uh, the whole of the inside of the cargo carrier was uh, disinfected, tested for any sort of microbiological problems. Uh, uh, problems that we could take up there and of course it's absolutely clean uh, and it was a major task to hand carry and put all this loading inside the racks. And finally we have to put on the final parts of the uh, uh, what we call the monthly layer in insulation. This is a thermal blanket all the way outside which gives us the right um, thermal conditions, the right temperatures inside the spacecraft. This has to be meticulously uh, integrated uh, ar around that. And finally, before we actually closed up uh, the cargo carrier itself, we cleaned it out uh, so that, uh, again, as I said, so there's no uh, microbiological uh, problems left in there. So that, that was uh, what we've been doing over the last three months. Uh, where, where are we now? Uh, we've now actually filled uh, the fuel on board for the Russian systems. We did that in January. Uh, uh, 